Hey folks, got my first meme build for you this season, and it's an ephemeral edge anime guardian of smiting. This is not the first time I've played an anime guardian build. A couple uh, leagues ago, I played one with a pneumatic dagger, did it like poison. Uh, and then I actually started off with a cane of Kulamok setup. But yeah, this one is going to use ephemeral edge. Ephemeral edge is really cool. It gives you um, max lightning attack damage off 20% of your uh, yes pool. And because it's tagged as player, not you, when it goes on uh, a minion, it actually uses the player's yes pool. So you can scale your own defenses and get damage from it, which is pretty sweet. Same way the uh, Wrath Pith Globe wor works, actually. So I was kind of like looking at like what other people were doing with EE builds, and most people are running Trickster and doing like an attack based build with it. Um, so there's like Shion Splitting Steel one, and then you've got Linger and PUE did a dual strike of Ambit Dexterity. Each of them kind of have their own like little thing. Um, basically, most of these types of builds are using Voice of the Storm and they're going Resolute Technique. So what Voice of the Storm does is it makes it so like your um, uh, your attacks that are not crits are uh, lucky with lightning damage. Now that's obviously not useful for minions because they don't get your stats. So I ended up like looking around and trying to figure out like what could I do to get lucky strikes because you kind of you kind of need it because the ephemeral edge only gives the lightning damage on the top end. It's like maximum hit damage. So if you want to use like volatility support and get like really big high end damage, you need some way to get your uh, damage lucky or else you're just like not hitting it for very much damage at all for most of the time. And so I found um, a specter called the Perfect Spirit of Fortune, which makes your allies' lightning uh, hits lucky. And once I put that on, it was like night and day. It was actually insane. This was a massive damage increase. So that's one way where the build kind of diverts from the classic EE builds. Uh, and then because it's a minion build, I didn't really want to go Trickster, even though like you could justify it just due to like getting the big ES pool from like the one Trickster node. But I decided to go Necro for a couple reasons. Well, number one is the obvious one is that you get like the minion tankiness because you get like minion more minion life and things like that. You get a bit of movement speed from the offering expecting you. But the big thing that you get is the minion leech. And you can actually go on the tree and pick up Ghost Reaver. Ghost Reaver makes your life leech ES leech and doubles it. And there's a cluster that's right next to it that you can take that increases the uh, total amount of recovery. And also you can take a mastery that gives you instant leech. So suddenly you've got quite a bit of recovery from your leeches. And then on the other side of the tree, there's Zealot's Oath. You take both of those and you get like vitality, you get like life regen rolls on gear, and suddenly the two combined, you're looking at like 4,000 or so recovery per second with a ES pool of like 10k. I've just got a Cortex playing in the background here. I think Cortex is kind of nice because it's got a uh, pretty thick, juicy boss fight, uh, but it's also got some like minions to clear. So uh, I've got like basically the whole map on there. So you can kind of see a little bit of both, better the clear, better the single target. You can see the healing and uh, the damage. Honestly, it feels pretty comfortable to play. I mean, if you've got like 10K ES and you've got four endurance charges up and you've got some like fizz converted, you're just, you just feel like you're immortal. <laughs> you very rarely ever die on a build like this. All right, let's like take a look at the last couple items on the anime guardian and then we'll uh, take a look at like my uh, setup on my character. So one thing I have on the anime guardian is the celestial brace gloves. So basically this gives you fortify on hit with strike skills and uh, smite and divine judgment is a strike skill. So it does work with uh, anime guardian so that basically gives you free fortify and about just like a little over 30 percent uh, increased attack speed which is very nice all right then we, we're also using legacy of fury this is basically just for the scorch so we can have reduced uh elemental res on the enemy but there's also a line on here that causes uh enemies to kind of have like an exploding effect and actually it does a lot of damage and it really helps with the clear considering that like um the smite is kind of in the like semi single target kind of range like it does do an aoe around but it really helps with the clear to have that mod on there and then i'm also using a replica victario's shield which by the way i think is actually insane this league because endurance charges got like massively buffed basically it just gives you and your allies endurance charges on hit makes your anime guardian really tanky gives it like lots of physical reduction and uh le reduction and then uh you know you pick up an extra endurance charge on the tree yourself 
And then that plus a Chaos Golem, plus a Fizz Reduction roll on your shield, plus uh, the Necromancer gets Fizz Reduction. You're starting to look at like, you know, 50 to 60% Fizz Reduction, just like flat. And then you've got like a little tiny bit of armor on top of that. And uh, yeah, you, it gets up there pretty high. You don't really take too much Fizz damage. You can also get a uh, Fizz taken as Chaos roll on your chest, and that's like eliminates another 10%. So um, actually, I don't take very much fizz damage on this build at all. The thing that kills me the most is going to be like big spiky elemental hits. I forgot to take a picture of the helm that I put on my anime guardian before I did it, but basically it's just got um, lightning pen, accuracy, and life recovery rate on it. All right, so that's pretty much all the gear on the AG itself. Let's hop into game and I'll show you my gear and then the uh, passive tree and the skill gems that we're using. All right, so here's the character, False Prelate AG again, second time, maybe even third time is a charm. Uh, okay, so we'll start off with the gear that I'm wearing. So this is a wand that I crafted myself. Basically what I did was I spammed this uh, base here with the Fractured mod with uh, Bound Fossils until I hit plus one Dominion, and then I annulled everything else off, and I just kept doing that until I hit just those two mods. Then I uh multi-mod crafted the trigger mod and the minion damage on and then i slammed the mana well, i was kind of lucky with the mana slam the, the mana is not 100 percent necessary but it is very nice All right then helm you're just looking at plus two minion helm with es on it shield you're looking for physical damage reduction and a uh, decent armor and energy shield pool bonus points if it's got like some reses that you need to help cap or uh you know, block, any other things like that that are uh, that are good. Hull's Uprising I'm basically using to not have to take any of the aura nodes here. So this cluster and uh, this cluster here I'm not taking. And I was actually watching uh, Faded Connections podcast recently and where Baylor Mage was talking about how like useless auras are because like every map you run has reduced aura effect on it and then just like Anything that you rely on with aura just feels like absolutely terrible. And I tend to agree. And it's like, you know, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven nodes. Like seven nodes for me is like so much energy shield, right? So I don't know. I, I think the value you get more out of actually just taking more defense and more ES than actually taking those nodes. And then if you can get something like an ult to just kind of like solve your mana costs, then uh, that's, that's good too. Uh, and then I've allocated Grave Pact on there for uh, minion accuracy and chance to deal double damage. All right, then our chest here, we've got uh, Twilight Regalia. Basically, you're looking for like a 1k plus ES shield. This sounds like a lot, but in reality, it's a lot easier to hit this number now than it used to be. And uh, yeah, you can get these for like decently cheap, like a couple of div. This one in particular was a bit more expensive because it has a tier one um, life regen roll on it, but you don't need that. It's just kind of a nice to have. And then you want to get the um, Eldritch uh, mods on there. The Fizz from damage as Chaos is amazing because it just wipes out 10% Fizz. You don't take any CI, uh, Chaos damage with CI. And then Endurance Charges. I want to get the higher tier of that one uh, soon so that I can drop uh, this Endurance Charge duration thing. And then you get a little bit of them coming in too from your AG with the Replica of Victorio Shield. So those two things together means you're like more or less capped always. Not 100% of the time, but it's up pretty reliably. Okay, and then for rings, you're basically looking for uh, ES, mana, and then the minion mods. Minion life, minion damage, minion attack and cast speed, minion movement speed. I would say put priority on minion movement speed. You need it so your AG can get around. It is a melee minion. It needs to get to the target to do any damage. So like minion movement speed translates basically to clear speed. Uh, bonus, if you can pick up some all LA res rolls on there, that's really nice. And uh, yeah, these are just the two rings I have here. I'll just hover them so you can see them. I'm using a Vixen's Entrapment so that I can get an extra curse. And uh, I'm using Enfeeble as my extra curse. So when I cast, uh, it just like auto casts that second curse, which is really nice. I'm using a darkness and throne belt. And for my jewels, I've got things like uh, energy shield, mana, and chance to avoid being stunned and some uh, minion accuracy nodes. You want to get at least like 51 to 52% chance to avoid being stunned total between the two jewels. So that if you don't have like 
quite a perfect darkness enthroned that it gets you to a hundred percent chance to avoid stuns the problem with ci is that your life is one in in poe how much stun you take is based off of your life so um yeah it's absolutely mandatory to get stun immunity on a ci build because it just feels miserable if you don't have it uh okay and then boots we've just got basically a set of paladin boots with high uh armor and es and some movement speed on them this one's got 35 movement speed and then a movement speed implicit and it's also got life regen i would also pick up a strength roll here just because strength is hard to get and it can save you a, a point on the tree all right that's it for the gear let's take a look at the skill tree for a second so let's start off with the right side here basically you're coming up and you're taking ci you're taking this cluster here so you can get uh you know your classic minion cluster i've got renewal and feasting fiends in this one and then the medium or small cluster drills you're going to use are just going to be yes so i've got savor the moment on both actually so that when you're standing still you get like enormous life regen uh it's really nice and then we come down here for ghost reaver as well and we pick up this cluster here that gives us the instant leech. And then this node here actually also gives us maximum total leech. This makes our life leech into ES leech and doubles it. So this like setup here is actually like really, really nice on uh, CI. All right, down here, we're taking this cluster and we're taking energy from within so that we can convert it into energy shield. That's just more ES. Like if I take this off, I go from 10K, uh, 10.1, to 10.6 so this is like 500 es here right that's that's really good value picking up life and man uh yeah life and es or sorry life and es picking up energy shield and uh mana there i like this duration cluster even though it's like not 100 percent necessary on the build because we're not using any like duration minions it's just nice for your offerings and um your curses to get extra duration all right, then we're coming down here and we're picking up all of these minion accuracy nodes. And as I said earlier, you're going to anoint the Grave Pact for even more minion accuracy. You can drop all of these nodes if you manage to get a um, Resolute Technique Ephemeral Edge. But I was like looking online and it was like 16 div for one. So I, that's a bit of a negatory for me. <laughs> Maybe down the road, if one of those, I see one that's like cheaper, I might pick it up. But that's pretty steep for what it is. Uh, then we're picking up Zealot's Oath. We're picking up the generic minion cluster here. In terms of uh, masteries, you want cursed enemies take the extra uh, uh, LA damage. You want 30% increased area of effect so that your minions are like hitting a wider area and flat accuracy. Even though a lot of people say like that's a bad node, like there's not many places to get flat, flat accuracy on this build right now. So um, yeah, that's just a nice pickup. Uh, then we're coming down for the extra endurance charge and a little bit of endurance charge generation duration and uh watcher's eye for all res and recovery rate and this gives us a little bit of yes as well so it's actually nice good value pickup you do want to come down here and pick up the k ward the k ward is very good because your minion your uh, ag is using a shield so it just basically gets like very close to block capped and then recovers all its life when it's when it's blocking so it's just it's very good and then this cluster down here is like your biggest ES cluster as well. So coming down here is actually very good value. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, thanks a lot for uh, watching the video. I really appreciate it. We're approaching a thousand subs right now. So if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more things like this, please like and sub. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great one.